and I am fortunate enough to have much of his work um, that he gave to me as gifts, as well as I inherited the contents of his studio and his shop. So I'm taking care of everything <laughs> with much love and admiration. <laughs> had the greatest imagination of anyone I've ever known. And I think that his artwork conveys that. He told stories, he created scenes that I think were irresistible, whether it was a solitary figure, trombone or trumpet player standing outside of a nightclub, um, or a woman preparing for her bath, you just can't look away. He was really um, a very romantic person. He was nostalgic, and I think that his artwork conveys that. And he, he was funny, and uh, some of his artwork also um, is humorous. There, there are some that have almost a comical or a cartoon-like quality. Anything that you see down here um, is very typical of his work. These two paintings show women in the privacy of their homes and he was really he loved women as subjects and he was taken with um, costumes of another era my dad did a lot of research on um, fashion so some of his paintings will be 19th century people or early 20th century all the way to, you know, probably into the 40s and 50s. In addition to painting the human figure, he painted a lot of street scenes. He liked the grittiness of the urban environment. I think the fact that he grew up in Detroit really had an influence on him. So he would feature people at bus stops, musicians outside of nightclubs. He liked signage on buildings, played a role in his paintings. Um, he liked architecture, but he was very, like, very nostalgic. So he didn't paint modern architecture. He would paint, you know, architecture of the 20s, 30s, I think, from the time that he was growing up in the city. And then he moved to L.A. And it's funny because he was really, he would write about how taken he was with Los Angeles. And, of course, the jazz um, that was so popular there. And, and that influenced his work as well. <laughs> My dad was really influenced by the Impressionists and the American Impressionists, as well as the Ashcan School of Painters. The paintings that he did of the urban scene 
I think really are reminiscent of the Ash Can Painters. And a woman named Jackie Shinners, who was with the Traverse City Arts Council and mounted a show for him, described his work. And, and I think in particular, she was talking about his scenes of restaurants and diners as um, having the technique, the brush or the brushwork of Degas and the lighting of Edward Hopper. And you can really see that in some of the paintings that he's done of, you know, waiters looking out diner windows and that kind of thing. He had such an imagination that was really fostered by the books that he read. He read Mark Twain and he read Robert Louis Stevenson. And at that time, you know, he was born in 1929. And so the great illustrators of the day, like N.C. Wyeth and Howard Pyle, he was really captivated by their work. And so he would try to emulate them. He would copy their work. And he grew up in Detroit and um, he was able to take classes one time at the Detroit Institute of Arts. So I'm sure that that played a role, but I don't think it was one one event or one thing that um, made him start painting. He did a lot of sketching, a lot of drawing. He would find potential subject matter everywhere. He would cut out pictures out of magazines. He has uh, had a library of photography books, uh, a lot of jazz musicians. A lot of it, I think, was his imagination. He would come up with an idea and then he would maybe need some help. Maybe it was a hand holding a glass or posture at a table, people conversing. So he would ask anyone who was visiting to be a model. And uh, when you look through the Polaroids, you can see that just a variety of people. He, the, the well driller, the guy who was the water witch that found where to drill, he took pictures of everyone. So uh, the, the Polaroids, I think, played an important role in um, once he had the idea, then he could rely on the, the Polaroids to help him get things the way he wanted. And really, I mean, painting is such a solitary occupation, really. And a lot of times, you know, I've said this so many times, but he was his best model. I mean, we all know that everyone in the family thinks, yes, Stuart was his best model because he knew what he wanted exactly. And it, when you look at the Polaroids, you can tell he's having a riot I and mean, he was home by himself. And you know, my stepmother was at work. So he was alone a lot of the time, and I, I think he liked it that way. But at the same time, when he could bring other people in and um, have the fun of, you know, posing them or having them pose and, and taking directing the pictures, them. directing them. Yeah, yeah almost like yeah. a filmmaker, really. Um, I th he thought that was fun. <laughs> Well, it was great fun. Uh, I was always really happy to be asked. Um, I lived far away. They lived up north. I lived down in the Detroit area. And then um, when I was in college and after college, it seemed like 
usually he would tell me when I got there, oh, I'm working on something I need you to model for me. Or um, one occasion he he told me in advance, bring your pea coat, make sure you have your pea coat and um, <laughs> a duffel bag. He wanted me to be like a waitress. So he said, I need swish and swing. And that's, that's the picture that you have in the exhibit where I'm sort of leaning into him and flirting with him. And he said, but I also need you to be a sailor. I need a sailor coming through the door. So I put on my pea coat and his Greek fisherman's cap and he gave me a duffel bag and I I'm carrying this duffel bag in. So I got to be a floozy and a sailor all in the same afternoon. Um, so it was really fun. And to be able to be part of this process was really wonderful. I serve on the Michigan Historical Commission with Tim Chester. And Tim is married to Henry Matthews, who at that time was, I believe, the director of the, gal of the art gallery. And so my husband, Dean, and Henry and Tim and I were sitting one evening and um, drinking wine and talking. We were talking about Matthias Alton. And so I started talking about the fact that my dad and I had gone to the Matthias Alton exhibit. And... <laughs> so there I am trying to think, how am I going to bring it up that my dad is an artist and maybe, you know, Henry would find this fascinating. And Dean just said, does Henry know your father's an artist? And I said, no. So we got talking and Dean showed Henry a picture of a painting that um, Dean had bought for me from a gallery up in Charlevoix, the North Seas Gallery. And when we showed it to Henry, he was really interested. He said, oh, your father really is an artist. And um, I said, yeah, or was. And so he said he would be interested in seeing his work and one thing led to another. And so they selected what they wanted and um, we've gone from there. And now I'm working with Annie on his papers and photographs and so. so they'll all be <clears throat> at Grand Valley available. At Grand Valley, for... yeah. And I think the fact that uh, they were taken with the collection because of it showing his process and that it could be a teaching tool is something that I think my dad would have been really pleased with. The idea that his work could inspire art students and show them one way of, of doing it, I think he would be really, really happy.